strength. That is the measurement we just used to be using the refractor. You go up to 1.2, you take it across to your 60. So it's slightly weak to get a good benchmark. So what we did is we took three different coffees. We had an Ethiopian, a Bolivian and a Sumatran. So we didn't just base it on one coffee, we based it on three coffees, trying to understand the tasting notes Per, per stage, not tasting notes of the coffee. So if you look at stage one, you'll probably see this when you tasted it. Stage one was high in body, it had a concentrated mouthfeel, so it was quite heavy in the mouth. But what we found is with those three coffees, and I think you could probably say the right for this coffee, because it's so heavy in, in mouthfeel, you lose the complexity of the coffee, so you don't have the right taste notes coming through for the coffee that you would expect, because the body overpowers it. Time viscosity, dark in colour, and again, <coughs> misleading taste notes for that type of coffee. Stage two is good in flavour profile, but without the body. So it had good taste notes for the coffee, but lacked the body, because that's taken in the first stage, not in the second. Drop in mouthfeel, increasing nuances, increasing acidity due to the lack of body. That is not the same on all coffees. Acidity is varied on coffee and brew time. Lighter in colour and less viscosity in the mouth. Stage three, which is the part of the drink you don't want in, so this is where you try and control your brew to stop that happening. And when we're testing coffee later, you'll able to see if you're going into that stage or not. So stringent, lacks any positive attributes. There's nothing positive in the mouth, it's giving all bad tastes. It's very light, it's insipid, and at this time through the brew cycle, the coffee bed's exhausted. It's got nothing good to give off. So at this point, what you might as well do is have a bypass built in. So you would dilute versus over extract. So you may find on a five litre batch brew, you would have maybe a five or 10% bypass so you don't kill the bed and you dilute it instead. Because you're better off putting good flavoured plain water in the drink than the stringent bad tasting water. So if we look at these in strength results, so again, it's the three coffees, the same three coffees brewed, and we looked at what, what are we extracting out in regards to solids? What solids come out as a number throughout the brew cycle? So we found that number one is the Ethiopian, <coughs> two is the Bolivian, three is the Sumatran. We had a strength reading of 1.6% strength on the refractometer for stage one. Stage two, we had 1.47. Stage three, 1.58. So it is right, obviously, you can taste, you can see there's a lot of body in that part <coughs> of the drink. If we look at stage two, it dropped considerably, it went to 0 0.65, 0 0.53 and 0.56. So a lot of the solids are already gone from the coffee bed. There's not... Is this measured yep. in TDS? Yes. Okay. Yep, total TDS. So you've lost a lot of the solids there, so it, obviously the mouthfeel again feels a lot lighter in the mouth. If you taste stage 3, or you, you see stage 3, it's 0 0.2, 0 0.17, 0 0.16. <coughs> There's basically nothing left in there to extract out, so all you're doing is pulling out bad flavours. And that last stage, really, if you think about it, the 18 to 22% is around here, but that is your 30%. So that's what you don't want out. That's that last 8% of the coffee bean that contains bad taste. If you combine stage 1 and stage 2, and this is a general combination like we did, two of the three if it hits a gold cup quality. So it was 1.25, 1.13, 1.21. And that was just trying to benchmark all the first two stages, the right parts of the drink. Scientifically, that shows that it is. All of the tasting and charting that you'll do today, again, taste is key. So obviously, if it charts like it, it's perfectly extracted at 19.5% extraction, taste it, because taste is the most important part. Even though scientifically it says it's right, it may still taste better somewhere else. But at least you know where you are on the grid. What we did here is we ran a brew cycle and basically we changed the brew time. So we agitated the coffee differently to find out what was pulled out through the brew, through the brew basket. We measured TDS, which is the blue. I'm colorblind, by the way, so it may not be. <laughs> TDS blue, acidity red, in, in short is bricks in green. And it was trying to look at what is extracted through the brew cycle in regards to those three elements. And we took a sample every 10 seconds for the whole cycle. This was for a 3 minutes and 20 second pulse brew, so we're agitating the coffee. Obviously when you're agitating the coffee, you're allowing yourself to give, you, give
give it a great pre-infusion. So you've got maybe a 32 second first on time, so the water's really soaking the bed, lifting it and then, then allowing it to calm down. When you do a pre-infusion, it just allows the bed to accept water better than just simply brewing straight over it. Especially if you're grinding and brewing, because when you grind, all the gases come off the coffee, surround the, the, the parts of the coffee that are being ground and reject water. So if you had a pre-infusion, like you do when you do your single cup, you get the bloom, that's allowing all the gases to come off and then get ready for brewing. So exactly the same with batch brewing, it works in the exact same way, as you would expect, it's coffee. So you've got your pre-infusion, as you see there, we were really high in sugars and TDS, which is pretty similar really, because when you measure bricks, refractometers measure, measure in bricks as well, so they're given a very similar reading. So we've got a lot of, a lot of solids coming out at the start, and then it dips and it plateaus. And what I found interesting is that you have a spike towards the end, so it gives off more sugars and more solids toward the end of the cycle, which I actually never knew until you do this, did this exercise. The acidity across the top was quite stable and then towards the end of the cycle it came out more. Then we changed the brew time. We went from 3.20 to 2.30 and to see what would happen. Again, two 10 second increments. Use pulse brew for two minutes and 30. If you notice the first stage, there's a lot less solids coming out. So with a lesser pre-infusion, we pulled less out at the start. It plateaued out a little spike at the end and then went off. But what's interesting is when you use a lesser pulse brew, we've got more acidity out. Because the acidity come out sooner on this brew than it did on the other brew, which was quite interesting. So if you put them both together, that'll just give you an idea of where it all, all the solids or all the acidity sugars are extracted. Is that interesting? Oh. <laughs> yeah? I found it really interesting when I did it, because I was always under the impression when you brew, but what's been pulled out, you know? in regards to acidity, because people always say, how do you get more acidity out? Just brew and see. But if you break it down, you can see. Did you use the same uh, roastery dates? Yes, exact same. Did it all in one session. Just sat in the office and spent a few hours having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and just brewed and then, you know, obviously, you did find that the two minutes and 30 did have more body and was, it was a better drink at the end. The lesser brew time was wasn't as nice, it didn't contain the roundedness. But obviously it had more acidity, which just interesting to do it and to see what happens. So what we can do now is before we go into the chart, have any of all of you seen this chart? Who hasn't? Anyone? Don't be shy. Yeah? You guys see the chart? Do you guys? No? Okay, good. It's just nice to have a mix because if everyone's seen it, have everyone used it? Have you seen it and used it? Do you use, do you use the mojo on the software or do you use the chart? This is the software on the phone. You've got that on the phone. <laughs> Very expensive. Yeah, it's about 20, 30 euro, I think, for the software. Oh, yeah. Something like that. So what we'll do is we'll have lunch okay. and then we'll go into the chart and then you can start doing some brewing as well. We stay on and you can only go up and down the line. You can't, if you're on 60 grams a litre, you can't go to here or there. You've always got to stay on that line. Okay? Left hand side axis is the strength, it's the strength of the drink. The way that we measure strength is by using the refractometer. There's different ways of measuring which we'll go through, but you'll be using a refractometer today to measure it. <coughs> Do you know if you have a refractometer? Yeah? Use it regular? No. You've <laughs> got too much money there. No. <laughs> I was curious, but then I was thinking, okay, for me, this is the most. Taste is key. It's just nice sometimes if you taste it and you're not quite sure what's wrong, if you analyse it and put it on a graph, it might tell you straight away. Yeah. You know, and, and everyone's taste buds do change slightly as well through the day. Like now if we did, it's interesting because a lot of the times, that tasting exercise we did this morning at 40, 75, 60 grams a litre, when we normally do that after lunch as well if we've got a full day course, and everyone changes what they prefer after lunch. <laughs> And you've had something to eat, it massively changes what you prefer. So left hand side is your is your strength reading. You gain your left hand side. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Um, 
when you were um, with, with the first experiment, when you were varying the, the doses and the, the amount of coffee, were you mainly uh, altering the strength or also the extraction? Strength. Strength. Just strength. All right. So all I was doing is jumping up these lines. Okay. So I was just going up the lines. I wasn't going anywhere else. Okay. So left hand side axis is strength. We get, measure with a refractometer. The re refractometer will say 1.35, just for say. Then you go on the left hand side, you find 1.35. You take that across to where it meets your grams per litre. Where it meets, you take it down and it will give you an extraction reading. What's the range we're looking for? 1.37. In extraction. 18 to 20. 18 to 22. What's the most you can pull from a beam? 32. These are all things just in case you do the written exam, there aren't there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just in case. So, when you get within the box, you should have an optimal balance of strength and extraction. Everybody likes different taste profiles, but at least you can shoot up and down the lines to get different extraction or less. SCA has a box, the box has slightly changed from that, now it's got no tuck on it so you can go as strong as you would like. There's another slide in a minute with that on. So, the reason they're in here is purely to show you that in 1952 these are the charts that they used. I was obviously a snapshot of the left hand side one where there's a little box, that's what we use today. So if the box has no top, there is no restriction possible and then still Right for the SCI. There's no what, sorry? So if you get as strong as you want, there's no uh, top on the box, mm -hmm. then there's no restriction, and then it's okay for the SCI. SCI. There's no restriction? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can go as strong as you want, as long as you're 18 to 22 percent extraction. The reason we did it is because, I don't know why, but there were some guys in Colombia who wanted a Gold Cup accreditation for the SCIE, but they were at 80 grams a litre. And with the old, the old accreditation, you couldn't go that strong. So they took the top of it and said, brew as strong as you want, but as long as you extract the right amount of solids from the bed. No one brews really over 65, 70, to be fair, in the market. I mean, what did you guys brew up? 60? 60. Yeah. Sometimes a little less. Yeah. UK average is 28. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw that in there for you. <laughs> so, coffee bean control chart. What does it communicate? It says that it communicates the amount of coffee material taken out of the, the ground coffee and the amount of coffee material inside of the finished cup. So it allows you to measure what have you taken from the coffee bed and put it inside of the cup. It says that again, visual representation between strength and extraction. Two different things. Strength, mouthfeel extraction, taste profile. SCAA, Specialty Coffee Association of America, has their box. Slightly weaker than the European box. The NCA, Norwegian Coffee Association, has again their box. Slightly stronger than the SCAA. And the SCAA have got their box, which is... Slightly stronger the American, but will go as strong as you would like, so you can, you can go 80, 90 grams a litre if you would feel the need. But one thing that stays consistent is everybody's 18 to 22% extraction. No one deviates from 18 to 22. Could you, could you apply this chart to espresso as well? Yes, All right. use the exact same chart for espresso with your 9 to 11% strength. Okay, yeah. yeah? So you just your strength reading is higher, that's all, but you're still 18 to 22%.